So today we're gonna talk about transformers, which is a not a very new subject because you studied this before in 204. So we're gonna go through some basics of transformers and also how we can analyze the ideal transformer. The concept of transformer is very important in power systems. Why? Because we need it. We, we cannot basically run the whole power system as we run it today without transformers. We cannot build big generators, large scale generators and transmit the power from one point to another point without a generator, without transformer, sorry. And we cannot even distribute the power and lower the voltage till the utilization level without transformers. So we need transformers and you see transformers in power grid in different sides and in the generator side as a step up transformer to minimize the losses in lines. And after that, it's basically a series of transformers to lower the voltage to the utilization level. So we step up, transmit, and step down, step down, step down till the utilization level. This is the basic concept of transformers. Even sometimes inside the house, we use transformers because we need to lower the voltage more, right? For example, you have, you have machine appliance 110 volt and the electricity at your home is 220. So you use transformer to lower the voltage from 220 or 110. Or the opposite, you can step up the voltage. The, the, the machine or the, the device is 220 and the voltage at your home is 110. So you use transformer to step up the voltage to utilization level. So there are many uses for transformers, but in power grid, we use them before transmission and in distribution side. To transmit and distribute. This is a picture of transformer and distribution level. This is how transformers look like. And inside this transformer, this is what, where we have the magnetic circuit. So all other equipments that you see here, for example, here, the, you have insulators, for example, to insulate the transformer. You have here for cooling purposes, you have fan, you have many things, but inside this, you have the core, which is the magnetic circuit, which we already studied so far. These are also what called low power transformers. It means that you use them for different purposes. You can go to the market and buy these small transformers. You need to be careful with transformers. Why? Because the power of the transformer should be equal or less uh, greater than the total power of all connected devices to this transformer. So you see, for example, different sizes, different power ratings of transformers in the market. So you, you, you cannot overload the transformer. You cannot buy, for example, 100 kilowatt transformer, but the total power of the devices connected to the transformer is 200. Why? Because the current will be higher. So the device is designed for 100 kilowatt for certain level of current, and you are just overloading this device. You are taking more current than what it's designed for. So as a result, it will start to be heated and will be damaged or will burn. So you have to be careful. So you usually buy either larger transformer than you need or equal. So in the safe side, you usually go to the larger transformer. The theoretical concept of the transformer follows the Faraday's law, which we studied already at the magnetic circuit. Which is basically relating the voltage induced to the number of turns to the flux. And we started this concept with the magnetic circuit when we said that if we have current and number of turns, we have MMF and after that flux. Well, Faraday's law actually it takes, takes this with the voltage because 
the voltage it's actually what's induced especially if you have a wire and the magnetic field first of all you have voltage induced not current so the concept can go in two directions relating these three components or factors if you have magnetic sphere uh, i mean the first concept if you have a magnetic flux and you have wires the result of us is what the result will be voltage induced across this so flux wires magnetic voltage induced the opposite concept which we studied in the magnetic circuit is that if we have voltage a number of things you have a, a, the result will be magnetic flux there is intermediate basically process is that it's not the voltage that will cause the magnetic flux to be generated it's the current because of this voltage which we already covered in that in that part so you have these three components voltage applied number of turns magnetic field you can relate between them in two directions as i mentioned if you have a voltage applied to a coil with a number of turns in the result will be magnetic flux generated but we know from the previous chapter it's not directly like this we know that the voltage applied will will cause the current to flow on the wires currents in the wires and number of turns will cause the mmf to be generated MMF with the reluctance, for example, of the core will cause the flux to flow, right? So it's not directly because we have first the voltage, then current, then because of the current and number of turns we have F, and because of the reluctance we have flux, okay? It's also the other way around. If we have a flux, we can get F at the terminals of this coil. And because of the voltage induced, we have current. So it's basically like this voltage and after that current. So we will use the two concepts or it's one concept, but two directions in the transformer today. And this is the equation that relating both of them. The voltage induced is equal minus N, where N is the number of turns derivative of a flux over t so the relation between the voltage induced and the flux is a derivative relation okay so the question here if we have fixed or constant flux what will be the voltage induced if we have number of things what do you think guys zero 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 yes zero because derivative of this flux which is constant will be zero so there is no voltage induced so if you have fixed constant flux going through number of turns but this flux is constant the voltage induced here will be zero if we have alternating flux or ac the derivative of this will be also ac so the voltage here will be ac so this is the main concept actually of the transformer is that it's working only with AC, not DC, because DC, you cannot induce the voltage. AC, you can induce the voltage. And we're gonna see this in the transformer part. So what is the transformer as a definition? It's a device for increasing or decreasing an AC voltage. And again, we are specifying AC. Because with DC, we know the relation, it's derivative, and there will not be any voltage induced in the secondary. And we'll, we're going to see this. There are two types, step up and step down. Step up, it means that the voltage at the output will be higher than the voltage at the input. Step down, it means that the voltage at the output will be lower than the voltage in the input. Inside the transformer, we have two what two coils. 
The first one we call it primary, the second one we call it secondary. So as I mentioned before, in a magnetic circuit, we always discuss this magnetic circuit with one, which is here in the transformer, it's called the primary. If we connect another one, this is transformer, and here we call it secondary transformer. So this is this is how the basically transformer looks like. We have the core similar as before. We have the primary coil and secondary coil. And this is how it goes, the basic operation principle of the transformer. Voltage is applied. And because of the current and the wires, MMF will be also generated. And after that, we have flux. The flux will travel from the primary to secondary. So what will happen now when the flux reaches the secondary side? Now on the secondary side, we have flux, we have number of turns. So as a result, the voltage will induce. So you apply the voltage at the primary. This voltage will cause the flux to flow. And you collect the voltage at the secondary. Following the same relation that we studied before, which is E equal minus N. Derivative of flux over derivative of T. That's why if you apply DC voltage, let's assume that this voltage is DC. What will happen? Well, you are going to basically have flux and the flux will be constant. When, you, when the flux reaches here, this secondary side, what will be the amount of voltage? Zero. Because the flux is constant, so you're not going to get any voltage at the secondary side. But if this AC... Now we are going to start to get AC flux and AC flux will cause this to be AC also. Okay. So the idea here, we said that it's either to step up or step down the voltage. So how we step up or step down the voltage? Knowing now the basic operation concept of transformer. Increasing the number of wires in the secondary part? No. It's not basically by adding any other component here. We number of them. Yes, good. We know that the, the amount of a flux here is following also this basically relation. But the, the integration, right? So if we integrate and and flux now will be one over an integration of voltage. So the amount of a flux that you are gonna get here is related to the number of tens of this primary side. Do you agree? Yes. The amount of voltage that you are going to get here is related also to the number of turns of this side. If both of them, they are the same. If the number of turns here is the same as the number of turns of the secondary, what do you think? What's going to happen here? Both are the same. Surface. Nothing will... Nothing uh... increase or decrease. Yeah, yes. that, that's correct. Voltage will be... Assuming that you don't have any losses in the, in the transformer. So voltage here will be the same as voltage here because what you are basically doing here 
you are changing the voltage in the primary to flux. Then you are changing the flux to secondary. Number of turns are the same, so you will get the same voltage. If the number of turns is not the same, for example, the secondary is more than the primary or the secondary is less than the primary, what will happen? The voltage also will not be same. So the voltage of the secondary either will be less than or greater than the voltage of the primary. And this is the concept of stepping up or stepping down the voltage. If Doctor, what, mm -hmm. what if we have reluctance? Doesn't it affect this? Uh, yes, all the losses will affect the amount of voltage that you get at the output. So reluctance, for example, uh, other losses, eddy current losses, hysteresis losses, you lose part of the power, right? So if you lose part of the power, it means that you are not, you are not gonna get the same amount of power of the input at the output. So you have reluctance, you have many things inside the transformer, but it's not gonna affect this relation. Why? Because we are saying that the flux will travel from here to here. So the flux is a result of the reluctance of the circuit. You get my point? But it's one flux in the whole circuit. Okay, but everything affects the amount of voltage that you can get at the output. If it is ideal transformer, what's the meaning of the ideal transformer? And this is what we are talking today uh, about today. No loss. 100%. Yes, it means, it means that 100% efficient. We are ignoring all the losses we have in this device. So we are ignoring eddy current, we are ignoring leakage, uh, ignoring everything. We are assuming that this is perfect transformer. Okay. So this is just basically what I mentioned before um, in writing. It's the same. It's the same concept of operation. So ideal transformer, I just mentioned this. We're assuming that relative permeability of the core is very high. Okay. Which means that the reluctance is zero. Because if we have relative permeability high, reluctance is zero. No leakage, flux. Even the windings, the wires of the windings, no resistance. And also all the core losses, they are ignored. So we are ignoring all the losses we know about the transformer and this ideal transformer. And this is the relation as also I explained before. So here we have the flux in terms of the voltage applied and the number of things of the primary. And we have also the voltage at the secondary in terms of number of turns and the flux. So what if we divide both of them? What if we say that E primary divided by E secondary? How we find this? Well, we divide this E primary, which is N primary, Derivative of flux time. Derivative of a flux. And then number of secondary. Derivative flux over T. So do we have a flux of a primary flux of secondary? No, because it's one flux in the Definitely. whole thing. It's one flux. So we, we, do, we don't distinguish between them. It's the same flux generated by the primary going to the secondary. So yes, what we can do here, we can just cancel this and this. And now the relation is Voltage of the primary divided by voltage of the secondary is equal number of tens of the primary divided by number of tens of the secondary. Is it clear why? 
we use this equation divided by this equation. Yes, that's okay. And this ratio, this is what we call tennis ratio, A. Meaning that based on number of tens of the primary divided by number of tens of secondary, the relation between the primary and secondary voltages is specified. For example, the voltage of the secondary is equal to what? Is equal to one over A or voltage of the primary divided by A. Do you agree? Yes. So if, if A is more than one, is this step up or step down transformer? Step down. Step down because if A is, for example, two, three, four, the secondary will be less than the primary. If A is less than one, is this a step down or a step up transformer? Up. Step up. Step up because if A is less than one, the secondary will be higher than the primary. So how we can have A greater than one? By making the primary number of tens more than the secondary number of tens, right? How we can make A less than one? By making the primary less than the secondary. Okay. Any question? So what you are saying here is that by controlling the ratio between the number of tens, you are controlling basically the voltage of the secondary or the relation between the secondary and the primary. Any question regarding this? So voltage per turn is constant. Voltages are in phase. Yeah, this is very important also concept here. What we are transformer, uh, transforming is the magnitude of the voltage, not the angle. So if the angle here is 30, it will stay here 30. If it is minus 10, it will stay here minus 10. But the magnitude is the one that we are changing between the primary and the secondary. Voltage magnitudes vary with change ratio. Okay. Also, we said that this is ideal transformer. So what, what do we mean by ideal transformer? Well, it means that we don't have any losses. So whatever input we have, it's the same as the output. What's the input that we have here? It's the voltage primary phasor quantity multiplied by current primary phasor conjugate. It's equal to the secondary. We're not making any, we don't have any losses. So whatever we have complex power input is the same as the complex power output. So if we divide also, or make basically the division a range, we divide I, IP by IS and I, ES by EP. We're gonna get this. And we said already that the voltage secondary divided by voltage primary is NS divided by MP, or the opposite we said actually. The voltage primary divided by voltage secondary is VP divided VS. But what's important to notice here is that it's the opposite. The relation between the currents is the opposite than the relation between the voltages. Here is the primary divided by secondary. Here is secondary divided by primary. So I, IP, I primary divided by I secondary magnitudes is the same as NS divided by NP. So it's the opposite. It's like one over A. Right?
But for the voltage VB divided by VS, it was A. Which makes sense, as I mentioned, because of this equation. But again, both currents will be in phase and we're dealing only with magnitudes. So this is the definition of transformer ratio or tens ratio. It's the number of tens in the primary divided by the number of tens in the secondary, which is NP divided by NS. VP di divided by VS uh, is equal to NP divided by NS equal A. IP divided by IS is equal NS divided by NP, which is one over A. Any questions? Hi, Shabab. Tamam, Doctor. One one important concept in analyzing transformers is basically referring quantities from primary to secondary or secondary to primary, and this was also discussed in 204. The concept here is that, well, we can basically, because of this transformation, and this is the symbol of transformer here, because of the transformation, we have like two different circuits, one with voltage primary, current primary, another one with voltage secondary, current secondary, and let's assume that we have load connected and source applied here or voltage applied here. And this is usually the case, right? You apply the voltage, you have transformation or transformer, and after that, you have another set of currents and voltage, and after that, a load. And this is like the power grid, similar to the power grid. Source, transformer, and at the end, load. There is a way actually to move all of these quantities to the primary side. And this is what's called the concept of transformation from the secondary to primary or primary to secondary. Why we want actually to do this? This will make the analysis much easier. Because why? Because here, if you don't move them, you will have to deal with two circuits. One, the primary side, two, the secondary side. So you analyze the quantities here, and after that, you use transformation ratio, and you go to the second side. But if you move all of these quantities, no need to do this. You analyze whatever you have at the primary side, because you will have the primary parameters, and also the secondary parameters move to the primary side. So how we do this? Well, we need to find the equivalent of this voltage, for example, on this side. We know that V primary divided by V secondary is equal to A. Okay. So V primary is equal A Vs. So yes, this is the, uh, the, the concept here. If you have Vs, it will be shown here as A Vs, which is V primary. So the equivalent value by, uh, of Vs in this side will be AVs. Makes sense, right? Because it's like the value before transformation. So if you are standing here, you are not going to see Vs. Vs, it will be in the other side. But you will see Vs before transformation, which is called Vp. So the concept is easy here. Vs in the secondary side, it's like Vp in the primary side. Or let's, let's be more specific, it's Avs in the primary side. Okay? And this is sometimes, it's called, not sometimes, all the time, it's called Vs prime. So what is Vs prime as a defi by definition? It's the secondary voltage referred to primary. So my question is, if we want to do the opposite, if we want to move the VP to the other side, what, what should we do? Divide by A. Yes, VP prime will be now VP divided by A. 
we divide by n. What about currents? Well, it's the opposite. If we want to move the current to the primary, Is prime will be Is divided by A. If we want to move the Ip prime to secondary, we need to multiply. What about the impedance? Let's assume that we have impedance here in the secondary and we want to move it to the primary side. Well, we divide impedance, we divide the voltage, sorry, impedance as Vs divided by Is, right? This voltage divided by this current. Makes sense. Ohm's law. So the equivalent of this impedance will be what? Will be the primary voltage divided by primary current. Or Vs prime divided by Is prime. Which is this. Vs prime or V primary is AVS. Is prime or I primary is Is divided by A. Of course the A here will go up. It's going to be A square. Vs divided by Is, which is Zl. So Zl prime, which is the impedance referred to primary, is A square Zl. From where we got the A square? Because of the transformation of both voltage and current. So as a conclusion, we move all the parameters from secondary to primary. The voltage we multiply by A, the current we divide by A, the impedance we multiply by A square. It's the other way around if we want to move from primary to secondary. The voltage we divide by A, the current we multiply by A, and the impedance we divide by A square. Okay? And of course, we are going to come to this concept more later. Just additional information you need to know, which is called the dot convention. This is for your information to know exactly what's the meaning of the dot if you have them in the transformer circuit. Dot, it means that if you have the dot here, it means that the current will go into the dot. And the plus of the voltage is at the dot. If you have the dot in the secondary side, means that the current is leaving the dot and the plus is at the dot. What if the dot is down here? So it's the opposite. Yeah, it means that the current is leaving here and the plus, yeah, plus. But usually the standard is to have both of them, of course, up. But just to know exactly if we if, if you have a dot, what's the meaning of this? Also, usually for transformers, we have two rated parameters. The first one it's called the apparent power. The second one is the rated voltages. So what's the meaning of the rated apparent power? As I said, this is like the maximum power that a transformer can handle. And it's important because by having or by knowing the apparent power, you know also what's the rated current. And also you have the voltages. The, the rated voltage of the primary and the rated voltage of the secondary. So what's the meaning of this? It means that if you apply 120 at the primary, what you are going to get at the secondary? 240. So what's the number of turns for this? Transformer. A is V primary divided V secondary, which is the same as N primary divided by N secondary, right? But we don't know here the number of chains. We know the voltages. So A will be equal to what? Two. Uh, one over two. One over two. Does that mean that we can only apply 120? 120 is the rated voltage, meaning that it's like the maximum voltage or the. Yes, that's correct. You can apply less and it will be the relation will be through A. 
So if you apply 60, the output will be 120. If you apply 10 volt, the output will be 20, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's the same, the same exact thing. But remember that the current is opposite. For, so if we are increasing the voltage, what will happen to the current? It will decrease. Yeah. How we can know the current? Well, it depends what's the power that you apply and what's the, but if we assume that it's the rated power, current here of the primary will be what? It will be this 2000 divided by 120, right? Because this is apparent power. And we know that the apparent power is equal voltage multiplied by the current. So yes, this is the power primary current. What about the secondary current? Or yes, that's correct. You can find it through E. So either you apply, uh, you use the same voltage outside. Why? Because we assumed it's ideal, right? Whatever power in the end, which is the same as the output. You divide it by the voltage here. Or you know the relation IP over IS is equal 1 over A. So yes, secondary. You can find the secondary current through this. You know A. You know the primary. So it's easy. So the rated voltage is basically the device can continuously operate at the rated voltage without being damaged due to insulation failure. So if you have more than the rated voltage, the insulation will fail inside the transformer. The rated current or through the rated power, the device can continuously operate the rated current without being damaged due to thermal destruction. What does that mean? It means that more current the, the thermal capacity or limits of the wires and also devices, uh, components of the transformer will be damaged. Just a quick example, and we already basically solved similar one. 200 kVA, so this is rated power. 6,600, this is rated voltage. 400 volt, this is rated secondary. 50 hertz single phase transformer has 80 tens on the secondary. Calculate the appropriate values of the primary and secondary currents. So how we can find the primary and secondary currents here? The churn uh, ratio. You can, but first you can find the primary through the power, right? Yep. Then you can find secondary, which is equal to A multiplied by primary. What is A? How we can find A? VB over VS. Through the voltage. Yep. Or you can see that IS is equal to the same power divided by 400. How about the number of tens of the primary? Then voltage will turn. Yeah, we know, we know A. The secondary number of tens is given. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You can find directly the prime. Okay? Yes. Example two, we're gonna go through it quickly, and this will show basically why we need the to to why we need transformers for the power system. Let's assume that we have this circuit representing the power grid. So we have voltage at the sending end or generation. We have transmission line with impedance. We have load. And we need to find what's the voltage at the load. And what's the current in the line. And what's the losses in the line. So it's, it's simple because we don't have transformer here. 
So we can directly use the voltage divider rule. We div find the current of the whole circuit, divide the voltage by the covalent impedance. We do. It's easy. If you do this, these are the numbers. The current in the line is 90.8 with this angle. The voltage at the load is 454 with this angle. The losses in the line is 1484, which is I square R. So what you, you are generating 480, and what you are getting at the load is how much? 454. Is it good? It's not good because you are losing a lot of voltage between the generation and the load. And this is because of the losses in, in this line, right? So, same example, but now what we are using, we are using 1 to 10 transformer here and 10 to 1 transformer here. What's the, what does that mean? It means that we are stepping up the voltage 10 times before transmission line. And after we reach the load, we step down the voltage 10 times to the load. So this is the same, con this is the same concept that we use in power grid, right? Mm -hmm. how, we, how we can analyze such a circuit? Well, it's not as easy as the one before. Because as I mentioned, it's like we have two, three circuits. دكتور أبي أسأل عن هذول وش بالضبط اللي يصلون السيركت؟ ترانسفورمرز. so this is the symbol of transformer. هذا الشكل آه. okay. yes. so it's not easy because we have three circuits. so the what we can do we can refer all the parameters to the prime to to from secondary to primary. we can refer all of these parameters from primary to secondary, and after that, we can draw the circuit, one equivalent circuit, which we are going to discuss next time, I'm sure. So if we do this and analyze the circuit, I'm just going to show the results so that you can compare. The current now will be 9.5. The, the voltage will be 479.7. The loss is 16.7. So if you compare with the previous one, the current in the line was 95 point something, right? Or 96 point something. 90.8. So it was 90.8, but when we use transformers, it's 9.5, which, which we already discussed before. We said we lowered the current. The losses, it was 1000 something. It's now 16.7 in the line. The voltage, it was 4.5 something, now it's 4.79. So it's much better now because it's like what you are generating, you are receiving at the load because you minimized the losses in the line. Okay. So any, any question, guys? Doctor, well, uh... هو القانون موجود في السلايد كم كم فيه سالب إشارات سالب؟ yeah the minus sign the, the there it was just the, the the polarity of the voltage but it doesn't matter because it's AC so the polarity is changing so you, you don't worry about that one. okay okay I'm gonna ask you a few questions for the class participation part. بعفيف بعفيف Okay. Jasser. What's the meaning of the dot convention? Uh, I don't know. 